welcome to a new uh, project that we started up. Uh, this is a McAllen Production podcast. Um, we're actually just looking to get into the music industry with our clients. Um, just something that's to do while we're all stuck indoors and stuff as well. Uh, adds, it just adds to the boredom. And uh, yeah, basically today I'm joined by uh, Robert of uh, Short House. How you doing, Robert? Not bad, man. How you doing? I'm all right, man. <laughs> and we've also got uh, Colin of uh, CJ Graham uh, Songs. Hello, how are you doing? You alright? How are we doing, guys? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, so basically, we're just uh, looking to get into the mind of the uh, music and the creation of it, guys, because uh, we know uh, that Robert does all the uh, songs and he does all uh, the performance, and uh, you've got the mastermind behind it all, uh, Colin, doing the songwriting. <laughs> so even if you just want to expand on that a wee bit more, like what you're all about and stuff, guys. Okay. Uh, Robert, you want to to start uh, off? Um... Yeah, so it kind of started off as um, and Colin. And I was Colin was my uh, English teacher in high school, and uh, and it was he sort of knew I was into music. I didn't really know he was into music at all until it sort of came to the later later time in my high school career. And um, I always sort of had a struggle. We came to the conclusion that I had a, I always struggled with writing lyrics mm. and. Uh, and the sort of narrative behind songwriting and just just getting that story out there and Colin didn't have as much of a musical um, outlook on it when it came to like the theory behind chords and that yeah. sort of thing yeah. and they uh, kind of came together quite nicely over that over what, what like nice songs came out of that over how to how to work together and I put a lot of theory into that and he obviously the songwriting behind it and it's kind of where we are right now. That's good. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear, guys. In terms of the, like, at school, it was a case of, you know, uh, Robert told, I always look, this is my favourite story. It's uh, Robert, when I first met him, he walked up to me, shook my hand, and said, Hi, I'm Robert McLaughlin, and um, I want to study um, music at university, so you need to help me get a B. That that was uh, my first introduction to Robert, and I was obviously well. I'd seen him obviously walking along the corridor, head head above everybody else, <laughs> going, going down the corridor. But you know that was my first introduction to him, and I was I was struck by you know his um, passion for music um, and his sort of single-minded desire to to pursue music. Um, at, at that age, you know, it was something that I certainly didn't have when I when I was his age, and you know, I, I was very impressed with, with him from that point of view. And you know, and then one point he invited me to go and see him play it, guitar at the Young Musician of the Year Award. So I took my son, and I met Robert and, and his mum there, and his mum being a wonderful pianist that she is, uh, we all got on really well and and it's kind of gone from there and, you know, it's even though, you know, yeah, I'm his ex-school teacher um, and I'm also, you know, well, what, 25 years older than him? <laughs> um, it, it, you know, that's never really been an issue from, from my point of view. We've just um, really, the, the sort of the, the music writing songs it's kind of transcended the that sort of that sort of that age gap and we've just come together and written some good songs yeah i think yeah. the one of the things we sort of talked about to start with was a respective of age or experience it was all like the sort of term was a meeting of the minds over over music mm. um, definitely it sounds a lot like that anyway yeah, yeah definitely you can, man you can see there's a, a professional uh, relationship between you as well as a sort of yeah to the point like you are both well interested in getting the same end result for each other so mm -hmm. it, it's good to see and it, it definitely comes across that way yeah good. thank you yeah so uh just talking about the the age difference there saying about 25 years so <laughs> you would have, colin you would, got a, you would have got a, a head start in the, the music industry before robert so would you mind telling us a little bit about how you first got into music yeah well uh i like I was, uh, music was around me my whole life. My, 
my dad plays the guitar, my uncles, my, my granddad played. There was always guitars um, around me. However, like I suppose a lot of boys of, of you know of my age and my generation, um, it, it, I, did, I was more interested in playing football and I never really picked up the guitar at all. I loved music, but um, I, I, it was when Oasis came along really that sort of changed everything for for guys like me because I never played music at school or anything like that. Um, it wasn't seen as the done thing really. Um, so. Uh, when they came along, it was just like, wow, guys that were like me writing songs and and making music, and I just thought I really want to be part of that. And I had a few friends who were in a similar boat, and and uh, so we we put together a band after school, and that that went on into my sort of um, like so early twenties, and played. A few gigs and and they uh, had a good time with that and and then that kind of as these things tend to do um you get a bit older and people want different things and and you go and people we went our separate ways i continued to play for a few years uh, but then uh you know i needed to get a needed to get a proper job yeah. you know <laughs> and so i, I, I dangerous words they're called i know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I thought about that for a little while, but um, yeah, for me in my head, it was I, I needed to have something as a bit of security, and then basically, uh, you know, university, teaching, children, I'm now 15 years on from that, and um, you know, wow, I've got all these songs, and um, you know, I, I, it's just a case of, uh, yeah, I need to... to um, do something with it but i'm kind of downplaying this the importance of music in my life really yeah. it gave me a lot it, to be honest it you know i didn't the first time around myself have a particularly illustrious school career shall we say and that's that's putting it mildly <laughs> um so um playing the guitar and and reading around like the artists that i really liked and i got into and like reading the books that they read and, and kind of my, my love of learning sort of came out of my love of, of music and and stuff and that that was me um so i i do i credit the, the sort of the this the music coming into my life as being the, the the sort of thing that that spurred me on so from that point of view i'll i'll never ever um i'll never ever sort of diminish it really in, in, in my sort of in my own sort of its importance to me. And then the amount of wonderful people that I've met um, over the years has got playing the guitar's got me into a lot of situations and out of a lot of situations, <laughs> really, to be honest with you. Um, it's always good. You're always you always get to to get to go to other parties, you know, because everyone uh, <laughs> wants to play the guitar. So it's all all good. So you're saying um it was sort of it wasn't until Oasis came about that you first sort of picked up the guitar, so that was mid-90s, yeah, early 90s, you'd say. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just started off, I was just singing. My, the, one of my best mates at the time, he um, he was he played guitar, so, um, yeah, and I used to, like, write uh, melodies and words over over sort of guitar, chord progressions that, that, that he was um, coming up with. But there was always a, a sort of rivalry between us um, from that point of view. So I was like, oh, no, I want a bit of that for myself, you know. So that's yeah. when I started. Because at that at the sort of initial point, I was always reliant upon his, like his sort of, him coming up with, with ideas on the guitar. Yeah, it's so I just wanted, guitar, yeah. Whereas, whereas I wanted a little bit of that for myself so I, I could have the idea from that, like they come up with the idea myself and, Although, you know, he's, I, I could play the guitar until I was, you know, every day of my life. Um, I'd never be as a good guitarist as him, but, you know, it was like just the sort of natural progression was, was picking up the guitar and and all, always just this sort of thing of melodies just jumping in my head all all the time, literally all the time. And it's, it's always been like that. It's just that, you know, for the last 10 years, or sorry, 15 years, I, I put all that to the, to the to the recesses of my mind and just focused on on 
on all these other things, you know, like proper job stuff. <laughs> I can definitely um, relate to, like you're saying, the fact that you've got a lot of melodies on your mind all the time and stuff. It's, uh -huh. it's quite similar in a sense where um, I have visualis visualizations for songs uh, or just or just day to day life where you can like just kind of um, contrast it with with. Uh, like songs and you can put that together to make a video as well because like, i'm mm -hmm. just thinking as songwriting and as the uh, production it's all quite a similar similar uh pathway if you know what i mean absolutely storytelling you know you're yeah. you're, you're telling a story irrespective of of the medium that you are that you're conveying that mm -hmm. that message through and and exactly. i think that that's the thing once you you kind of you realize that that there are no boundaries. It's all, yeah. all this thing. It's just it, it, that's when when the fun really happens, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Zolbert, um, is it okay if we just ask you about how you um, first got into music? Obviously, yeah, it was, go for uh, it. Colin got into the game a, a lot sooner than you did, considering you were even a, a thought in the nineties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, if you want to just let us know about how you first got into music and. Yeah. So I think. Um, both my parents being professional musicians and uh, and and you know touring the world on cruise ships and backing bands and things like that, um, it was always there. Music was always sort of around me and, and inspiring me to do things. But again, I started quite late. I didn't start playing an instrument until I was about like 12, 13 is when I properly you know, devoted myself to to the guitar. It was through. It was, I suppose it was through an unfortunate event that turned out quite fortunate. It was when my, gra when my grandmother got ill, I moved to stay with her for a year. And there was like no Xbox and no TV and no Wi-Fi, like a you know, typical grandmother's house. You know, there was nothing there that was so... But there was a like an old nylon string, dusty thing. And I just sort of picked up. My dad showed me a few, a few chords and sort of... So sort of took off from there. It's that first like taste of getting like the instrument giving you something back. I found really quite addictive, um, and then that was it. That was sort of the, that's where I am now. Just from that, it was all the help from my family along the way has obviously been great. Went to a lot of um, went to private tuition and and just to sort of top up on technique and things like that. It was my all my whole family's musical. Both my cousins. Um, they were older than me, they were both uh, sort of like, sort of thing that Colin was saying as well, like wanting a bit of that for, for yourself, like I watched my eldest cousin perform and she's a beautiful voice, she was obviously she's four years older so she was doing a lot more ahead of us and, uh, and I wanted a wee bit you know, of that for myself so it pushes you to work pushes you to work harder not necessarily competition but just you know a guideline it's, to follow it's kind of like a, an unspoken sort of jealousy or rivalry that's not yeah i mean really definitely a, envy yeah yeah. Uh -huh. yeah um i think you need that though yeah, yeah definitely. I, you know and as long as every, everybody realizes that um you know it's all relative to your own experience mm. and and you and you and you would be happy for a family member or a friend mm -hmm. to do really well, you know, um, you still can use their their sort of their interests and stuff as, as someone to spark off of, definitely. Exactly. And then following on from that, um it was it was through my cousins that I wanted to study music at university because they did that before me. And now and they were all at university on the same course, all doing music, so it's like you know, it maybe starts off as that envy or jealousy. Not, I mean, it's definitely not jealousy. That envy of of them just being a wee bit of a step ahead, and they were sort of in in our own path, doing our own thing. Still, like we're all all in completely different sort of fields, but still all studying music and starting off at the same thing, coming from our parents and grandparents and things like yeah. that. I, th I think um, obviously with you just about to turn eighteen, Rob. But I think it doesn't matter of your age. I think that's you can cast that aside. Yeah. It's, it's all about the ability, and you've mm. you've definitely got the the same ability, if not better, as a lot of musicians that I know. So I mean, it's it's clear to see, especially within your family, that mm. these are definitely all related. There's no DNA test required. <laughs> these have all yeah. definitely got the music genes. So it's good. I to mean, see. I definitely put it down to family. I think 
can like especially for children it's it's all about that and if you nurture music into them i don't think i would have the same i mean i might whether you have the same natural ability or feel for something but it's all the support behind it can make or break where you where you go musically and i've had nothing but the utmost support from from my whole family so i really credit them for that yeah definitely you've got to want it I'm sorry i don't know if you were wanting me to continue oh, on but oh, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know you you've got i think the thing you can have like i've known a lot of people over the years who's parents have been supportive and and you know ha had like lots of uh you know wonderful musical equipment bestowed upon them but the bottom line is is that that will just sit in the corner unless you you're willing to as you said robert dust down that that guitar and put in the graft and get the sore fingers and and um you view it as a kind of both a it's hard work. Ah, it is, and, and the yeah. bottom line is, is that you know you're saying that you, you know, you you only started that at twelve, you know, mm -hmm. like that, that was the the time that was was right for you. Me, yes, yeah. I, 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 at, at twelve, I, you know, I, there was no <laughs> part of me that was ever thinking along those lines. So, I, for me personally, I think that you. You know, from that point of view, from the, where you are now, I agree with you though, Declan. That I, I, I don't think age comes into it yeah, because yeah, feel the, like I uh, feel the feel that you have, the tone, the the kind of the way, the perspective that you take on the, on the piece of music, the the way you see the world, all these sort of things. Yes, they you can grow over time and and all that. But the bottom line is, is that you know you've got to want to see the world like to reflect and you've got to want to make art mm. you've got to want to make yeah. to, to create things it's got to be yeah, in yeah. you yeah you know, regardless of family it's, it's in you yeah i do think i do think my mum my mum and dad were sort of like because my mum started less you know like when sort of piano lessons when she was seven and my dad again it was all like when they were really young and, they, and, they, and me being sort of 12 was like not almost leaving it it's never too late but it's like that sort of bef while you while you're no longer like a sponge to absorb everything like a child does musically um so i feel i caught it just before sort of that time it's like the jedis man <laughs> <laughs> you just you want just you just got in just uh, you just got into the temple just in time uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> to as a padawan Sorry. I was just I was a bit of reflect, reflect on, on uh, obviously, obviously because, because beforehand, beforehand Robert, Robert you've he obviously just started Short House just recently. Mm -hmm. Um I know I know before that you were in a band and things like that as well with Declan and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um what's it just like obviously because as being a member a uh, member of a band, it's not um you're obviously not in the spotlight as you are with mm. the lead singer. It's yeah, obviously yeah. a big, big comparison. Um, yeah. Even if you just want to dive into that a wee bit, obviously, because now you've got more attention on you. Yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, like, so, like, it's, all, it's obviously it's only early days at the moment as well in terms of, yeah, like, totally. leads, like, being, having more publicity on me, but even the amounts mm. of things that it's just, like, it, I must it's weird seeing yourself and hearing yourself so so directly yeah rather than just like hearing my guitar track or hearing something like that this is like because you can change the tone of your guitar and you can change the tone of your amp and everything like that but like i can't change my voice like that is me that yeah. is like bare so it's a wee bit um yeah it was a start with i found it a wee bit daunting to hear myself yeah. back and to and to have confidence in, in saying like this is me um mm. but that is literally only achievable through through doing it <laughs> like the more the more even like having like a doing like a thank you video for people liking the page or, or sort of stuff like that and it's like seeing your face and hearing your voice and it's just like you like it's not it's, it's a weird feeling and it's exactly. i mean like yeah. but i feel i do enjoy the responsibility because it's like it's entirely up up to yeah. me not in terms of like what we want to try and do and 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 where we take it and it's a nice thing to do especially when you've got a good like such a strong team behind you um but yeah i mean 
I, I definitely will like it the more the more we get into it when we're gigging and it's that sort of you'll like start to get used to it. You'll start to get used to it. Yeah, imagine. yeah, definitely. Like the sort of having us having like getting into things like more stage presence and talking to crowds and things like that is going to be a yeah. a great learning curve that that exactly. I haven't yet sort of experienced, but I'm you know more than willing to tackle sort of thing. Looking forward to it. So yeah. I mean, being in a band, you obviously have. You've been with members that have had to tackle things like stage presence and talking to mm. audience, but I mean, you've been a, you've been to enough gigs and concerts to know, like, yeah. to have a rough idea of what's the right thing and what's the wrong thing. So I mean, that's always a good thing as well to kind of be a little bit a, a step ahead of the game almost. Um, yeah, definitely. So like going to other gigs and listening to other artists talk, like, even if they're necessarily, you know. Like learning from what they should have done or they should or they didn't do is things like that like taking things um, pick up stuff <laughs> just from people that are already doing it or are ahead ahead of the game um, mm. again that whole thing about sort of envious that that's process. not me and yeah exactly it's definitely yeah. a confidence thing as well just so you can see that like with the amount of bands that i've seen it's definitely a confidence thing where yeah. they might not be too confident in speaking but mm -hmm. obviously they're way more confident with their voice yeah, sometimes yeah, it goes the other way. You know, people are yeah. people, pe people, persons, and they talk out and they're really <laughs> confident. But when it comes to sort of that, yeah. it's not there. So it's getting a good balance of them both, I suppose. Exactly. My my philosophy on it has always been that if you've got good songs and you go up there and you know that you've got good songs, and that like I remember doing gigs and you get people coming up like if there was say. For example, it was like a back in the day, like a battle of the bands thing or something mm. like that. To be like, you know, oh, you know, we're we're the best band. You know, we 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 want to go last. We want a headline, and I I was always just like, right, fine, <laughs> go for it. You know, because at the end of the day, I felt I'm not saying that I, I'm not going to sit here and say oh, I had great songs. I'm just saying that I felt in my in myself going up yeah. there that I had I, that. I was confident in the songs that we were mm. going up to play, that they were they were good quality. So yep. that so I, I always took confidence from that, um, and so you know I, I think for Robert, especially with the the sort of the talent that talents that 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 you've got, that your confidence will will drive from through from the fact that you know you um, you know you've got good material mm. and also but also you're not arrogant so you know you've got yeah. a, a great a great sort of leveler there yeah I, I definitely think a lot of confidence comes from sort of your your own confidence amongst the band like being this is what i, I feel I'll experience when it comes to when it comes to fronting the band live it's like knowing that the musicians in my band i, I have complete faith and confidence Aye. in them and yeah. amongst their own instruments and their own sort yep. of thing that takes a lot of load off of me having to worry about other things. It's just like everyone's strong in their individual crafts. Mm -hmm. And in the band, in the Short House band, they're all fantastic players. So, so great in that Good sense. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. So, uh, going on to the, a little bit about the track Wall's End, actually. Um, obviously, just being released, uh, doing really well on uh, Spotify, etc., getting a good reception. Um, but when was it that you actually wrote the song, Colin? Uh, January 1997. <laughs> so before Robert was a thought again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was 19. So what was, why did you choose, but why was that written, um, sorry, uh, why are you choosing now to start to bring that out, you know what I mean? Like, how has that now became a thought process? Well, I think the release, like why we've done that one, I'd probably need to pass that one to Robert because, yeah. you know, Robert's, Robert chose that one to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it was, well, because Colin and I, we always, when we, when we were looking back, Colin's repertoire for me to take, to take songs forward, like Wall's End was always a standout song anyway, just because it's a beautiful song. And, uh, but it was like, a thing I liked about Walls End is the fact that Colin wrote it when he was 19. Like, it's not too far away from my age that so there's a few songs Colin's yeah. written that, like, I literally can't relate to at all. You know, if Colin wrote a song <laughs> about, like, 
like having a wife or kids or you know that sort of thing like i've not nothing to do like i can't i can't even yeah. act as if i know what that is mm. um but you know that sort of feeling of um you know whether that be breakups or moving and things changing like adulthood independence all these things that you sort of that i that i took from from the song helped me relate it and helped me when i'm performing it even in the studio whether that be live that i can actually put myself into that emotionally rather than just mechanically singing a song that someone else wrote and um, it's exactly what what happened with that song and it just it fell really nicely because obviously colin's such like a soft spot for that song it's one of i imagine one of your proudest songs you've written um, yeah and and for me it was one of the favorites so when when we were sort of in the studio working on it it was a, a delight for both of us to, to work on for for me for me the the song um was one of the first one like because it may be written up to that point about 10 songs um and it was the first one that i kind of wrote that i felt I, i've got that that i've got something here mm -hmm. do you know what i mean that was kind of like that that something even though actually the irony is that as a band because of the sort of like the, the time that it was i was i was a bit embarrassed to play that song really mm. because of the content um, it's not cool you know i yeah that's that's another thing which i have like the utmost respect for robert for the point of view of like you know th like that like at, th at that time i was very much uh, sort of curtailed by by that whereas robert you know sees the sees the the the, the sentiment in the song and and is is opening it out to his interpretation of it and and to be honest that like that song there is probably the most honest that i've like what sorry what i mean by that is that i normally like to write things in such a way where there is a lot of interpretation in mm. terms of what the lyrics mean because i want i don't want to i don't want the song to be about me i want the song to be about the person who's listening to it mm. i want them to be able to take to 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 if that if i if a, a lyric resonates with them then i want it to resonate not about what i was thinking or feeling at the time what they're thinking about it um so you know that that was the that one they are it's pretty obvious what it is about you know but it's still uh, in such a way that that there is still that scope for people to interpret it their own way and i've i've always have felt that that's really important and there's so, even enough in there sorry declan just um the you're saying there's still enough room for interpretation there's a few people that have commented to me about the song knowing it's like you know the the narrative being quite obvious still saying that should be some sort of you know like lockdown song you know it's like when the walls end when we get out of this so that's like <laughs> even though it's nothing to do with that and and just coincidence when we released it it still is interpretational enough that that people can take that from it and you know yeah well the thing is is the person the person that i wrote that song about um hasn't he been in my life for 22 years so it really it, it, it doesn't resonate in any way in relation to that person at all yeah yeah so it it, it has more it's connection ideal, but, you know. behind the sort of concept mm. of of distance yeah um and and what is and that bit of hope that you know when this is over we're going to come back together and and, we'll, and times will be good and that yeah. sentiment is what i'm left with not anything to do with the with the with the person the girl that i wrote that song about back in the day yeah <laughs> so it's always light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> uh, so would you say saying about how you're you're leaving it open to interpretation and at the time that you wrote it it wasn't sort of branded as the the cool sort of genre of music would you say that was maybe a, a reason why there was a delay in sort of putting it forward and bringing it out into the world maybe um yeah at the time yeah at the time definitely but but you know by the time like i couldn't i could not care about anything like that at all 
now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? At all. And that's why, as I say, it's so refreshing. The the response from Robert to the song and you guys to the song and, and you know, just a sort of general, like, I, I, as I say, I said earlier on that age does the matter and it totally doesn't. But the fact that, that, that people in your age group and, you know, are... are like sort of have been receptive to it is is wonderful from that point of view because as I say I, it probably said more about me Declan at the time than it does about any, anybody or anything else really yeah, oh. but, but so the fact is that you know I have got a lot of other songs and that be honest that you know so like for the last sort of 10 years like my biggest sort of like the person who um, has like at family gatherings or whatever like th there isn't this sort of like let's play loads of cover songs it's it's normally like calling That's songs that become yeah. family favorites and, yeah. and people are like go and play that one go and play that one so walls end kind of from that point of view got like there are other songs a lot of other songs that i've written that 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 people have been like oh play that one play that one yeah. uh, play this one so it kind of from that point of view but you know, but my partner Charlotte, it was really her. She was like, I played it to her, and and she was like, uh, I like played played her walls end, and obviously she knows that it's, that it's not about her. Yeah. <laughs> she's but she's like that's a, I, you know that's the song is she loves the song, and and so that sort of like um, her her being like saying that to me was one of the things where I was like started to play it a lot more. Um, from that point of view, so it's not been an intentional thing because of the the genre or the sentiment of the song that I have played it as much. It's just over the years. It's just been that, yeah. Um, there were other thing, the other songs that you know that 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 I've written that that people that were in my like sort of sphere of people that I was sort of with, my family and my friends and stuff were. Uh, we're saying, can you play that? Can you play that song? Can you play that song? So, um, I, it, it was surprising to me when Walls End emerged in the way that it has. But, I, but, but I was equally, you know, well, not equally, more, more delighted that it, that it was that one that sort of that has emerged. I do think to add to that as well that, like, going back to when when the song was written and it, and it wasn't really branded as cool, the song even right now isn't what what Colin wrote it as, it's, it's a it's Wall's End with a completely different interpretation on it. Totally. Um, and is, is would be branded in a different category with the, with the whole different vibe and especially like the production on it. And obviously yeah. the production work in studio can actually influence the genre much more than, than the sort of feel of the song itself. Um, and it's this difference, so it was like Colin's song taken by me and interpreted by me differently. So again, gets branded different ways. Don't know if maybe would have been if that had happened back then. What would have happened? But you know. Oh, you're you're completely right. I, you know, back then, I wouldn't have had the well, the technology wouldn't have existed to mm. do it in the way that we've done it for a start. Mm. Um, and and the musicianship of the of me and the people that I was with at that time, that was another factor. Um, we probably couldn't, well, we definitely couldn't have done it justice, to be honest. Um, and it was one of those ones. And I've got another few that are like that, that, that have got key changes and various different things in it that that, um, that I was imagining in my head being with a completely different setup. But yeah. but but most importantly, Robert, it's the, it's the you're right, it's the treatment that, that you gave it and the vision because that end section, for example, I, like, because it's basically verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and then this kind of a prize at the end. And I, mm. I, I, I envisaged that in a different way, and I debated whether I should, I should write another verse, or I should maybe write a bridge, and then mm. then come a chorus again, or whatever. Um, you know, so th th you're completely right. The treatment of it, the style of it, the. The, that end section and and the and the, and the feel that we get from it has is a is something that 
that didn't exist in 1997 and is down mm. to you know the work that um you dom and i did and um, in, in the production and obviously in your arrangement of it um mm. in terms of the end section definitely so you're saying in a, about not having the technology that you did in 97 um yeah. well and uh, about the way you released it so um obviously teamed up with us to do a lyric video um, and obviously we, we when we first heard the song well, when I first heard the song um, my, obviously my initial reaction was completely different to what people hearing it for the first time now would be um, based on the situation what's going on in the world just now so yeah. mm. with the lyric Super. video and the single sleeve as well because obviously they designed that mm-hmm. um, completely like it, it could have been completely different if you say you brought the song out in two months time rather than just now mm-hmm. so um I just wanted to see what your guys thoughts were on obviously designing the single sleeve getting the logo sorted and then obviously with the lyric video as well yeah i mean i think when it came to the the sleeve for the sort it was very i mean i'm it sound, maybe it sounds a bit contradictory to say I don't like over producing things, seeing as Walls yeah. End is heavily produced. Um, but it's quite, you know, as minimal as we could sort of get it. I mean, if, even though the sort of the, the, the background of of the sleeve, you, you can't really tell what it is, whether it's static, whether it's like just shading, whether, and if you actually look closely, it's almost like it's a wall, you know, yeah. <laughs> just in reference to, well, well, that was in reference, even though it's got really nothing to do with anything. Yeah. In the song, um, but yeah, I think you're right in saying if it had been designed now, I maybe would have taken a different, different narrative on, on what to put out there. I'm not really sure what you what I would do, but um, breaking free. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I personally really liked from a sort of like from the point of view of you know McCallum Productions in terms of the sort of the energy. Uh, and the ideas that you guys brought to it, like straight away, I, I, yeah. I, like that first meeting that we had in Robert's living room, that's I was struck by that, you know, um, straight away, you know, and that's what what I love. I love that when people are like, just bang bang idea idea, and you know, and just seeing what sticks and. And not being afraid to to kind of put various different things on on the on the on the table, and uh, and and just see what what works. And because uh, I think that's what Robert we we've done mm-hmm. when we've been yep. producing both Warm Hearts on and and Walls End. I, I think that it's not that they're overproduced. It's just that we 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 went into the into all the minutiae detail around, mm. you know, and and you guys were the same, straight from the energy and the and yeah. the ideas and stuff like that. It was it was really refreshing, you know. It was the same sort of thing yeah. that, I, that I maybe maybe it's a trait that I that I bring with an overproduction, but it's like both anything Colin and I have produced and when it came to working out single sleeves and things like that with you guys, it was very much the end product became apparent once we were stripping things back rather than adding so we added yes. a lot of stuff you know in hindsight it would be too much stuff and then ended up it taking stuff overall. out and it became a different thing same with the same with walls end and same with the warm hearts which colin and i produced last year it was like threw everything at it and then started taking things out and it made more sense rather than wondering what they sounded like or what they looked like for example mm. and and that, that well, with the final i know the lyric video was all you I didn't I was I was leaving that to you and it was it was great I had f- complete faith in what you would come up with um, but it was exactly sort of what we would have done again that it was not not too much not too little good yeah. balance you I think, and uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> no no I was just sorry to interrupt man I, I didn't realise you would start talking there I was going to say I'm now being followed by a uh, Walls End football team <laughs> so I'm, th- I'm, I'm thinking that's coming from, from the lyric video. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen the drone Get footage. The... Ah, yeah. So that's quite class. I think with the lyric video, just 
because obviously I came up with it myself and stuff, a lot of it was just kind of visions with the lyrics. Because um, obviously, as you say, like, um, oh, I'm trying to think um, just just with what, what I put in. Uh, I put in, in obviously, um, I think there's a lyric about uh, meeting eye to eye. Or, or along those lines um, and then obviously I've got got the eyeball in the background and it's expanding and stuff um, but as a whole song it is like a mystery to kind of know what it is about and I kind of wanted to emphasize that in the lyric video where you've got uh, there's a, a scene of it uh, it's just a car going down a motorway um, and then it's obviously another one it's just got like a beach dark background just just stuff like that is just um, putting it through to that and for the viewer to make up in their own head. <laughs> Absolutely. It's yeah. important. It's an important thing that the, the viewer gets gets the the, the space to kinda interpret it the way that they they mm. want to, to see it. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting it's interesting what you were saying earlier about like um you know how you like you images come into your head a lot mm. of the time when you're associated with particular things. I have that with like with guitar chords and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, col colours and stuff come into my head when I'm playing specific guitar chords and it's just mm. you're feeling it in whatever way you're you know, it comes to you, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I can definitely relate to that. <laughs> cool. So is there anything else in particular that you are wanting to mention <laughs> or talk about that you can think of? Covered quite a lot, I think, from from our aspect. But um, I'm definitely looking forward to the next thing from you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oh, that's the thing that I'm, <laughs> I'm struggling with the most at the moment. Like we've got this yeah. Colin and I sort of mapped out the set list the other day, and <laughs> like it's really satisfying to look at, but it's really, you know, annoying Obviously, that you can't take yeah. it any further. And it's mm -hmm. going to be a while until gigs are back exactly. up and running. You know. Yeah. yeah. I was just about to touch upon that in terms of gigs and stuff. Uh, obviously, it is a bit disappointing with what's going on now. But mm. um, what are your views on uh, industries and um, venues? Hopefully, just making a comeback from that. Do you think it will be a struggle, or do you think it will just hit straight away? I hope. Well, I think it's inevitable it will be a struggle for for, yeah, for some, now. Um, yeah. depending on how long how long we're out for. But mm. um, it definitely is a, it's a massive wake up call. In general, there's a few things being on granted. Facebook about how, yeah, taking taking venues for granted or taking art in general for granted, like that is the main yeah. thing keeping most of us sane, and mm -hmm. it's the main thing that's underfunded. You know, it's like when we're all completely stripped back and and, and bare, and everyone turns <laughs> to arts or turns, or obviously the, like necessities that we need, but then everything is then creative. It's like nothing definitely, else. Definitely, yeah. Um, that's just, it's, it's definitely just a. It's an opportunity to get your creative side out as mm -hmm. as you're going into it for new new artists and if you're doing if you're doing music or you're doing artwork or whatever mm -hmm. it's definitely a chance to just uh, fully invest in that yeah and there's so many resources obviously online yeah. you know like there's a yeah. lot of people that learn from home and from these things anyway so this this is an even even better time to to get stuck into that exactly no i hope like like most aspects of life i hope that that there is this that people take this opportunity to think about what's actually really important yeah and like in everything you know um both as for me as a teacher um and like in terms of music the fact that that musicians are in a position where a lot of them you know because the royalties aren't there anymore that they they, they don't have an income at this time, you know, for me it's pretty scandalous that, that a lot of people don't have that to fall back on mm -hmm. because of because of the, the situation that we're in and I hope that, that there, as I say, there's just a, a, a sort of a long hard look at w w what's important and, you know, mm -hmm. as Robert said, I think it was Robert said about, you know, what is everybody turning to, to keep them going? It's been taken away in their mind through music, through films, through art, engaging in all that, and mm. you know that's just Absolutely. shows its power and yeah. importance. I think, yeah, I think there'll definitely be a bigger sense of uh, unity not taken for granted in the music industry. 
because I yeah. know for a fact like folk can dwell and they, they kind of go on their own roads and things like that but I think uh, folk will start to appreciate uh, it's not just the music just in communities and stuff I think that they won't take anything for granted anymore that's yeah definitely it's community being hit and down that road like I was about like yeah like, I can't wait to just speak to someone like in mm. person you know like I just can't like exactly just to not. talk to like I'm never going to refuse like going for a coffee like again or really anything yeah. like that it doesn't matter just like going out and talking to someone or going for a walk <laughs> or something like that it's like the things that you do I can't be bothered doing that I'll do it in our time and yeah. it's like the only thing I want to do right now is just have a normal so face to face conversation yeah so like this would be in person if, if it wasn't online, eh? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. That's a funny way of saying like you're desperate for a pint, Robert. I'm desperate for a cuddle from you, Declan. I'm desperate for a cuddle. <laughs> no, I, think, um, I think that's good. That's really good. good. Everyone's been being touched on. <laughs> well, thanks very much, guys, for the yeah, opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Uh, no, no problem. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been fun. I really enjoyed it. We'll probably most likely definitely, definitely have you back on uh, with future projects and stuff like that as well in the meantime. <laughs> definitely. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, guys. Right, guys. No worries. Right, nice Cheers, Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. 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 Thank you.